Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Today, we want to change things up a little bit. We have the online arbitrage godfather, Chris Grant, here, and we want to get super tactical and beginner friendly and talk about the best ways to get started, what to do, what not to do, common beginner mistakes, and stuff like that. So, Chris, for those of you, uh, for people who might not be familiar, you kind of want to give a little walk through on uh, your history, Amazon wise, and then we'll jump right into it. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been selling for over 10 years. I I, I lose track of, of when I exactly first started, but uh, got started on Amazon a long time ago with uh, some magazines and then did some thrifting, which I do not suggest for beginners these days, unless you're selling books. Uh, went to retail arbitrage, went to online arbitrage, and then kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, never really got into wholesale, did a couple of private label things just to test them out and see how they would work. Um, and those were learning experiences more than they were profitable experiences, but I'm glad I did them anyway. Uh, and then I've, you know, I've, I've just tried to help out the community as much as I can. And it's been a ton of fun, whether it's just through free content, YouTube videos, blogging, uh, the courses that we put together. Um, it's been, I don't know, it's been a ton of fun doing that. Yeah. The wholesale challenge really rocked. Uh, that was fun for everyone. Like, uh, me a month or two ago, we're getting yeah. that, uh, getting that going. But, you know, just to get going, let's talk about, okay, the first steps to getting going, right? So you obviously got to get your Amazon seller account open. We want to go professional, Mm -hmm. not the individual route, right? It's going to cost you 40 bucks a month, but there's way worse ways you could spend 40 bucks a month. And then what do you think is the next step? In my opinion, it's definitely, you want to get your first sales as quick as possible, right? Irregardless of whether it's profitable or not, but let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, You know, so you can learn as much as you want. And a lot of people mm-hmm. will will stop right there and they never get to that next step, which is just selling something. Uh, and I, I like the way you put it. It doesn't necessarily need to be profitable. Now, it would be great if it is. However, what you're going to learn from buying a $10 product at Walmart and maybe selling it for a $2 loss on Amazon uh, is going to teach you way more than just watching the videos uh, oh, you know that you see on on YouTube and stuff like that. You're going to know the process of shipping things into Amazon if you use FBA. You're going to know the process of merchant fulfilling which right now we're recording this we're kind of we're sort of in the middle maybe on the tail end of back to school yes, so sir. it's easy to make some money. Um, I, I was at TJ Maxx just the other day uh, and they had just a Gaylord of backpacks and I was like, "Oh, let's take a look." And sure enough there were like 5 or 6 that were 30 40 bucks profit each. Um, did you pick them up or no? You left them for someone else. No, no, no. I picked them up. I don't, we don't <laughs> yeah, need your profit parents city. raise you better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, up. It's, it's kicking. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, but you can learn the process of merchant fulfilling those, uh, and, and see how that goes, see what it's going to cost you and start getting an idea of kind of those, you kind of need these things saved in your mind, you know, especially if you're doing retail arbitrage. Oh, that's going to cost me six bucks. That's going to cost me 15 bucks, you know, whatever. Um, and if you can do that as quickly as possible, just to prove that it works, then you've got the confidence to start saying, okay, maybe I can start using a a credit card. Maybe I can start, uh, posting my results and asking questions, uh, with a little bit more of an informed opinion than you would if you're just spending 10 hours watching YouTube. Yeah. I mean, I think, and first of all, I lost money. I think on the first like five or six products that I tried to sell on Amazon, right? Because there's so many little fees and, and fee, uh, fees that start to add up. Mm-hmm. But from like a, a, a feedback loop perspective, I think there's so much value in starting with Merchant Refill, right? Because with FBA, right, you buy something, you send it there, two weeks FC transfer, another week for it to start to be available and things like that. Whereas with Merchant Refill, you could start selling things the next day or the day after if it like moves, right? Oh, yeah. So, and I think a lot about the first month is is really just a matter of starting to pick your battles, right? You can get into the weeds with a lot of this stuff, right? But to get going and start to get your feet wet, it's not necessarily vital to get into the nitty gritty of Keepa, to get into the nitty gritty of all the different variations and stuff. So like, what would you say to the beginner Amazon seller in terms of like, how to really start to wrap your head around all this information? Because a lot of it is front loaded, right? A lot of it mm-hmm. is learn it once and, and now you're good to go. But where do they should, where should they start in terms of like actually trying to make educated decisions? I mean, when I got started, like 
I had no idea what Keepa was, you know? Mm. So it was, okay, is there a sales rank on this? And, and what is the sales rank? Uh, and if it was, you know, back then, if it was under a hundred K, I'd be like, oh, well, this makes $10 in profit. I'm just going to give it a shot. Like, there's nothing wrong with that now. And you could just pick any random number or, you know, I know you guys like to stick under 50 K, uh, which, you know, will help with, with speed, which is nice. Uh, but you just pick a number and say, you know what, I'm just going to stick under this particular number and it's going to vary on category. And there's plenty of sales rank charts out there. Uh, it's a little selfish plug. I, I update one. Yeah. Every good one month. too. Yeah. Yeah. Check that shit yeah. out. Yeah. I don't, I don't care for them, but I know that the market wants it, which is why I created it. Um, you know, but you can use one of those and say, okay, I'm going to stick under this number. I'm going to go and I'm going to scan products or I'm going to look for products online and I'm just going to try to sell them as fast as possible. Um, I don't know. The the speed at which we learn when there's a little bit of cash on the line is it's just it's way higher than any other type of learning that you're going to, to get. Uh, and then it's a function of getting really good at the important things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understanding Keepa is incredibly important. Uh, Garrett, I actually just, I just watched your, uh, uh, your Amazon to Amazon class the other night. Uh, it was great. And like, nobody needs to know that level of detail right, in their first month and their first six months, but you need to know, well, how can I figure out what the velocity is on a product? How can I figure out if, there's a chance of losing money on this, you know, over the the history of the buy box and things like that. Uh, and I think at a minimum, you need to understand the correlation between an increase in supply and what's going to happen to the price uh, if the velocity doesn't increase in parity with that. Uh, and that all sounds fancy and things like that, but it's not. It's fairly easy to learn and it's all free if you go watch some YouTube videos, you know, follow these guys on Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's a lot of value in, in trying to prioritize velocity up front, right? Mm -hmm. Because profit's great, but especially as a beginner, if you have $100, $1,000 to play with, you buy a whole bunch of really, really profitable stuff that doesn't move in three weeks. Well, you haven't really made any progress, right? Absolutely. I, I wrote a thread not too long ago on uh, the importance of the speed of money. Exactly. Uh, and it, it talks about how it, Amazon is a compounding game. All right. And and hopefully people getting into it understand that when it comes to arbitrage, we're not we're not building any equity in a brand like PL. Uh, we're not going and getting brand exclusives. We are flipping products that are already popular on the most popular e-commerce platform on the Internet. And that gives us the ability to churn our inventory at such rates that we would make Walmart and Target jealous if they cared about us. Uh, you know, those guys churn their inventory about four times per year and people who sell fast moving inventory can churn their inventory 12 to 15 times a year on the Amazon platform. And the ability to take that hundred dollars, turn it into 110 and then 125 and 150 and so on, uh, is what makes this platform powerful. And then at scale too, right? The mm -hmm. way I like to put it, there's no other mechanism in the world that you can turn a hundred dollars into a hundred, a hundred ten at scale on demand, right? So that same thing holds true for ten thousand. Same thing holds true with a hundred thousand, right? And pretty much whenever you want, right? Once you develop the skill of, of really how to uh, analytically, analytically understand what a product has done, to use that information to forecast what it will do, that's that's the skill that's going to continue to scale. Along yep. those lines, as a beginner. Let's kind of talk through the maybe three to five big, big red flags that they should be uh, that they should be on the lookout for. Right. Because those are probably one of the most important things to understand in the beginning, more so than like deep diving into the variations, because red flags mm -hmm. are something that's going to really hinder your growth. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, in my opinion, one of the things that's really important is you want to stay away from the products that are going to cause any account health issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially as a beginner, you know, we've been around a while. We've, we've sold some products. If we were to get an IP complaint or an inauthenticity complaint or something like that, even if we ignored it, it's probably not going to result in a suspension because we have some history with Amazon as a newer seller they're They're going to treat you a, a little more harsh on occasion. 
So you need to be able to know what an IP complaint looks like. And that's really easy. If you're looking at a Keepa chart, you'll see the number of sellers typically fall off of a cliff. Uh, you see that, you know, once in the last three months or six months, that's a big red flag. You see it more than once in the past three or six months, and you need to run away from that kind of product. Um, you need to make sure that you're keeping good records. Uh, and as a new seller, this is something I did not do well. I'd, I'd take my receipts, you know, from retail stores, I'd stick them up in, uh, in the window of my car, and then they'd turn all black and I wouldn't be able to use them. And I'd be like, oh, whatever, no big deal. But it is, if you have an authenticity issue, you know, if you sell something with a, a little bit of a damaged corner or something like that, you need to be able to fight that. And so you need to keep good records. Well, I yeah. think the, the third one is, is really understanding products where you have no chance where you have mm -hmm. no fighting chance on the market, whether that be Amazon owns 100% of the sales or a third-party seller that owns 90% of the sales or something that just simply doesn't move, right? So those real metric mover, movers, those real big velocity skewers, I think that is one of the big things to dive into in the beginning because, again, that's going to be – if you have 100000 or if you have $1,000 that you're starting with or 500 well, we need to maximize each and every dollar as much as possible. And so yeah. maximizing based on how fast you're going to move those products is a lot going to be is going to be a lot more efficient than trying to get as much profit as possible. Right, but making mm -hmm. sure that your product is going to be moving so that hundred dollars comes back into one hundred five or five hundred comes back to five fifty. Right, that's going to be super important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Another mistake I see a lot of people make is like thinking very uh, like kind of one or the other. Right, do I FBA or do I FEM? Obviously, it depends. Do I do RA or do I do OA? Obviously, it depends. Um, but on that sort of thing, because especially in terms of like sourcing method wise, that is kind of the most important thing. Where do you think people should start product research wise? How do we get those first couple items rolling? I mean, retail arbitrage is unparalleled in the speed, speed at which yep, you can yep. move things. Um, and we could we could even take that over to hybrid arbitrage. If you absolutely don't want to go out to a retail just store, yeah, just, you can go to yeah. go to Walmart, go to Target, go to Walgreens, wherever it is, find a product, and then you can pick it up in store in an hour. Um, and then the ability to turn around and merchant fulfill that product is, I mean, you can literally sell things before you check out at the store. Uh, it, it's crazy. Um some of the some of the best bolos I've ever had have been like that. You know, we're we're in a Target, we're in a Walmart, we're looking for a product, we put it in the cart, we update Seller Central that we picked up five, and before we even swipe the credit card at the checkout counter, they're all sold and they've got to be shipped as soon as we get home. Um, when you can do that, I mean, that's that's almost. I mean, that feels illegal. You know, uh, being able to have profits in your account before before you even pay for the product. And so, but people want it to be complicated, man. They they don't want the answer just to be to go to your night your local Nike outlet five times and scan everything to then learn, right? To then build leverage, right? And I think it's a very I say this a lot, but it's it's really hard to that first time you go out and do retail arbitrage because a lot of people have that employee mindset that like, damn, I got to do this forever, right? Because you know what I mean. Some people don't see you know career path growth and such basically, but especially like when you're talking about owning your own business, like. You know, if you're still doing the same thing in six months when, you know, starting out as a beginner, just going and scanning stuff like you're doing it wrong. Right. But then again, you know, if you've never made progress on something, it's hard to see yourself and imagine yourself making progress. on something. That's exactly why you do need to go ahead and uh, do the grunt work there. But yeah, also, is that hybrid arbitrage? Is that a new term right there? Because I don't think I'd heard of that, but it's a really, really good way to put that in. I have done a lot of that myself. Yeah. So it's, it's not a new term. It's something that I know I have been using for a couple of years, okay. uh, you know, at kind of when COVID came around, uh, that's when like all oh, the stores were like, yeah, yeah, they have you know, okay, that makes yeah sense. you know, Target and, and Walgreens and Walmart, they had it available, but not at the scale it is now. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much get anything, uh, pick up in store or even delivered to you. Uh, you know, Perfect. right to your, I mean, up, yeah, in and out, yeah. Now I could, I could source the Publix. Uh, they've always got buy one get one free on like I don't know 20, 30 different grocery products every week. I could source all of those, have them delivered to my house, tip the person ten bucks, and then merchant fulfill those products from my house. I mean, it's 
the ability to make money is is ridiculous. And talking about the whole kind of quote unquote hybrid model that you were talking about, there's no better time than now, right? We're recording this in whatever, August, August or something. And if you're listening to this episode before, call it September, October, there's so much opportunity to do specifically that when we talk about seasonal Thanksgiving items, right? Seasonal Christmas items, back to even now, back, a lot of back to school opportunity for the next couple of weeks. There's oh, yeah. So I've much got a, Go ahead. Sorry, I've got a great example of that seasonal item you talk about. A couple of years ago, there was uh, this singer, and I don't remember who it was, but she came out with a sweet potato pie that was only at Walmart. I know you what could, you're talking about, too. I can't yeah. remember what it is, but I know what you're talking about. You could order it for pickup. You could order it to have it delivered to your front door. And they were like five bucks and they were selling for 45, 50 bucks on Amazon. You merchant fulfill those things. I know some people that sold a thousand of them. It was insane. And another one is, and I'm telling you, it's been this way for the past couple of years. It will be this way in 2023. Are those like hot chocolate balls, like the milk, you know, come in a little box, Target, Walmart. If you are listening to this and they have a look at your local Walmart, Come November, December, January time frame. I'm telling you, those will be profitable. And the Thanksgiving, that. yeah. What's cool too is a lot of you guys, uh, I mean, you might not be familiar with Kiva Product Finder. Chris and uh, Garrett have a lot of good stuff out there. You should go um, check that out. You can do keyword searches on there. So for example, right now, it makes a lot of sense to do the keyword football, the keyword soccer, the keyword volleyball, um, school, backpack, stuff like that. And then what you can do is Keep is actually going to tell you what the best performing products in that are because you can filter by what's going up in demand the most, aka what sales rank is going down the most, or what's going up in price the most as well. And uh, I mean, they, Keep it doesn't really make it pretty to go ahead and actually search in that. And that that the Product Finder page has, uh, I don't know, probably like 200 different options or so when realistically you're probably only going to be changing like six of them uh, throughout your your whole time there. But it's it's pretty neat, neat, neat to be uh, you know able to leverage that type of... Um, you know, data as well. Okay. Mistakes people make, Chris, what are some of the, uh, you know, things you obviously get a lot of beginner questions, you know, so do we, where are people going wrong with stuff as a beginner typically? In my opinion, I think one of the biggest things that people go wrong on is they, they go too deep too quickly. And now I know that, I know that you guys are, are, very happy to go deep on products, but you guys have experience, all right? Mm -hmm. I still use somewhat of a catalog method where, you know, maybe I have 150, 200 SKUs and I'm maybe 10, 15 deep in some of my best days and maybe a little bit deeper than that, but I go very, very wide and very shallow. I really think that newer sellers need to take that that approach. Uh, The reason being is, let's say you, I don't know, let's say you are brand new, you decide to join some sort of, of lead discord or, or whatever, someone, you know, shares a lead on Twitter, and everyone who retweets it gets the lead. And so it's gone to like 80 or 90 people. Well, you go sink all of your capital into what looks like a really good lead. And then something happens that you cannot predict yet, because you don't have the experience, and then you lose all your money. And then that's how Amazon becomes a scam. You know, those are the kind of people who are like, oh, Amazon sucks. It, you know, it, it nobody makes any money because of one single mistake. Like they know. And, yeah, they know from doing exactly. it. Exactly. Like, they, they, they know better, better than us. It's completely. <laughs> yeah, that, that, exactly. That part is, that's like the people you're competing with. And, and you know, in, in some, you know, unfortunate regard, um, you know but it makes Miles me... gets passionate about something when the sarcasm comes out. You tried for a week and you know better than I do. Yeah. It makes perfect sense right there. Yeah. Um, I, my part, my, my, there's, there's few things I hate in the world more than like the, the, the term I had no luck. Like, I hate that. The, the, I tried that. It's like, dude, clearly you didn't considering it worked for everyone else and it didn't for you and whatever I could go on about, but people have no idea how much work it takes to get good at this stuff too. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I love showing people like, especially in regards to like the whole networking side thing, like Garrett and I have this spreadsheet from like back in March of two years ago. It's what we did. It's like, I got like, 200 leads sitting right there it's like there was no way that it didn't work with Mm -hmm. that level of effort and and like knowing people and shit like that and everything but let's talk about just kind of like the the scale of effort needed to make it work people i think trip on which is partially our fault too yeah yeah but like whatever you know i mean the the unfortunate thing is is that we as content creators we do have to talk more about the positives than the negatives yeah yeah Uh, you don't have a choice i mean 
otherwise people are gonna be like oh well of course and they're telling me it sucks yeah it must suck these guys have been at it for a while you know we've got to tell people where the opportunity is and what the upsides are if anyone's going to listen to us one of the biggest problems as a beginner seller is the work is so front loaded yeah i I love atomic habits i love james clear uh and there's that um oh shoot there's the uh i think it's I can't remember what it's called, but you know, he shows in a, in a little picture kind of how difficult it is. And there's, there's no movement. You're not feeling any, any forward progression. And then all of a sudden everything just clicks and you kind of see this hockey stick growth in, in your personal development, in your business and things like that. And we've got to make it through uh, what he, what he calls the trough of despair, uh, you know, and get to that point where things can just really start taking off. Um, it, it's for Amazon. It's for anything else that you do. Um, and I think that really makes people upset. They, they see people on TikTok. I want and, that, bro. I want the shit. Where I, do too. I want it to take a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it should, anything worthwhile is going to take a, a longer than you think, you know? And so, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, you think about like the average career path, right? Someone goes to college for four years, spends four years, a, yeah. tens of thousands. Grades, grad school. Maybe a couple internships, entry level, right? You're talking seven, eight years before they start making real strides in their career, right? Mm-hmm. But with this, and it seems so different, so counterintuitive. If someone really grinds for six to eight months, a thousand or uh, one year, you will have a fluent understanding of Kiba, a really good understanding of where to acquire the products that you're looking for, and a network of five, seven really close friends that you can get at this with right Mm -hmm. and you can do it for less than 500 dollars a month to run the entire business yep it's unparalleled yep yeah ip alert yeah kind of shifting uh shifting gears a little bit and we'll go around the we'll go around the table everyone gives their own opinion let's each of us talk through really tactically step by step how someone can find their first product tomorrow right we'll start with you chris all right uh so The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some time because you're probably not good at this. Uh, You're also going to need some sort of tool, whether it's the free seller app from Amazon, uh, whether you, you know, what, what do you guys get? You get a 14 day trial on seller amp. Yeah. Yeah. definitely. Okay. Go grab seller amp, you know, get a 14 day trial, install it on your phone, connect it all up. And then you're going to need some time. Now, whether you do this, behind the computer or out in a retail store. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll set the focus OA. We'll do specifically OA, first OA product. All right. So in my opinion, I think people should go out and and actually do it harder. Okay. I know you guys talk about and go find other storefronts that are doing well and and reverse search, search those. My opinion is, is you should actually come at it the other direction. Find a store that you know, okay. My wife knows Target like the back of her hand. Uh, if she spent time on one category at Target and went through every single product, type it into Seller Amp, look up all of the uh, the regular listings, look at all the multi packs, look at all the bundles. Uh, you will find. Matter of fact, I can think of two brands right off the top of my head. We could open up Target, we could find profitable products, and we could have them for pickup this afternoon. And it would just be a function of spending two or three hours behind the computer, looking at every single product, typing in what your cost is, uh, and then selling it. And so it's a little bit harder to do it that way, but it gives you an idea of what you need to be willing to do to continue to find products down the road. Which is more important. The work ethic is the more important part. And that's why like, I know we're specifically talking OA, but like, you know, books, there's such a high success rate for people who started with books that like actually gave yeah, a shit, right? Because yeah. like they realized how much easier it was once you had leverage, whether that be like capital or just like doing OA um, and stuff like that too. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go a different route in terms of like best way to get started. Um, go on YouTube and watch a bunch of OA sourcing content, preferably from like three plus, two plus months ago. Look at the winning items that are in there. Um, and then like you can reverse source from them. And then... Uh, like this is actually going to super benefit people long term. One, like as you're googling stuff, right? You're seeing products like if, especially if you saw it in an OA sourcing video being sourced profitably, right? Those items might be good, the same ones or the ones that are right around there in the storefronts, right? 
when you're seeing you're Googling stuff with Selleramp, you're seeing these websites that carry the products. There's a very good chance that's where they're coming from right now. They don't look profitable on the Google shopping. That's because there's discounts. You're going to find those discounts and you're going to track them as you go. They might be at the bottom of the screen via an email signup code. They might be like Foot Locker is a good example. If you go to footlocker.com slash coupons, you might have to Google Foot Locker coupons, but you're actually going to find it that way too. It might be on the Capital One Shopping, Be Frugal, Rakuten, free Chrome extensions right there. You might have to ask the customer service right there. But the nice thing is once you find one of these coupons, you're going to put it in a spreadsheet and you might be able to use that for several years. There's a few ones I can specifically think of that uh, I was worried about going away two years ago and I checked out with it last week. Two years later, the coupon's still here. I still talk to people every day that have been doing this for years that don't know about that coupon for that website. So especially with OA, discounts are the differentiating factor and being able to find them um, or position yourself, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about networking to get notified of stuff, which is what we all did basically, right? Uh, which is easier. Um, and uh, you know, just to like figure out what stuff's going on right there. But yeah, I'd say look at profitable leads from videos you've seen. Um, ideally from several months ago. How do you do that? You type it in on YouTube, you watch the videos um, right there and then storefront stock off of there and understand that you're going to need discounts to make stuff profitable. And that if you like put in genuine efforts, it's like pretty easy to find discounts for different websites um, right there too. What about you, Garrett? Yeah, I think I would, I would go a similar approach, right? In terms of OA in the beginning, you have to cast a wide net. It's a volume game. You have to consume a lot of product information warm product information, relatable product information. And then if you go through 500, 700, 1,000 products of adjacent, of, of relatively filtered information, you're going to have success. So I'd probably start at a popular Nike product. doesn't matter which one. That's not going to be – the profitability of that one is irrelevant. What we're really looking for is a real accumulation of a lot of relevant information, adjacent products, adjacent storefronts. It's something I talk about a bunch. Right, so if you pick five Nike products, each of those will probably have 10, 15, 20, 50 stores that are also probably doing OA, right? Look for storefronts that have a couple hundred reviews or less, right? And then just go into each and every one of those storefronts, right? Because we're depending on a couple of different things that are going to help us out. A, the products in that storefront are filtered, right? It's not products on a site, retail site. They're filtered in some capacity because we're assuming that product was probably purchased properly at some point. Whether we can replicate that purchase is to be, to, be, or to, to be determined. We don't know. But the fact of the matter is SellerMap allows this to go through a storefront in a really organized and efficient manner and map back suggested buy costs, right? It tells us exactly what we need to be buying it for, which makes for a really quick connection, pressing the Google button and seeing what we can buy it for, right? So using a couple Nike products as a lens to really absorb, digest, and consume a lot greater information in terms of relatively similar products, relatively similar categories and things like that is going to serve us well, right? So starting a couple Nike products and just start going one by one of all the sellers that have Nike, have related product information, and then just go through and continue to map back to Google and see where the products are going to lie. I'm telling you, if you go through 2,000, 3,000 products of adjacent products off of that first one, you'll have success, right? It's inevitable at that point. Yeah. Also, uh, definitely be using SalesGazer too. Could you talk a little bit about SalesGazer, Chris? Oh yeah. Let me let me touch on your guys's point real sure. quick, yeah, and then yeah, I'll talk about works. SalesGazer. One of the other things that I think people need to do is, I, I like your guys' methods, but people are lazy. All right. As Google good. Google has yeah. right. Yeah. Google has infinite scroll these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to click through to page two or page three or anything like that make sure to scroll down past the brain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the there's an SEO term. Uh, the best place to hide a dead body is page two of Google because nobody ever goes there. Uh, and if you will go there, you're going to find sources and products and things that they're just not so great at getting ranked on Google. Uh, and some of those can be absolute bangers. Yeah. Um, now let's, let's talk about sales gazer. You guys talk about catch all emails, uh, which are fantastic. It's a great way to kind of have infinite coupons and things like that. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we tried to build that for everyone, uh, without having to go in and, and do it themselves. So sales gazer essentially is you sign into a portal. It's absolutely free. And then it looks like an email inbox 
And every single, we don't know, we've got like 900 sites in there right now. Every single sale email that gets sent out gets put in that inbox if you choose to follow that store. So if you want to know, if you want to get every single Walgreens email, you want to get every single uh, Foot Locker email, you subscribe to those stores right inside Sales Gazer, check the inbox every day, and you'll see every single promotion they're doing. Uh, and you can look back and see what promotions they did you know, two months ago, because a lot of times those promotions will come back again uh, in the next couple of months or next couple of weeks. Uh, and I don't know, it's a, it's a great tool and it costs absolutely nothing. Sweet. Okay. As we finish up here, um, we're going to talk about the by far most underrated, um, by far most neglected um, side of this whole thing, which is what Amazon sellers do you know, right? It's a common self-development term. You're the product of the five people you talk to the most, whatever. It's the same way with Amazon. You're the product of the five Amazon sellers you talk to the most. Now, most people don't talk to anyone, so they have to work a lot harder, make a lot more mistakes, and find all the opportunity on their own. Um, now, they're saying, okay, I hear Miles say this every podcast. I don't know what to do, which is a form of procrastination because if you actually wanted it, you would have already posted a video yourself on Twitter and tagged all of us. We would have retweeted it instantly. Several thousand Amazon sellers would have seen it um, right there. But, you know, what are your thoughts on that, Chris, in terms of, uh, you know, networking the community and how do people actually get into that? It's it is probably and, and I know we can say this until we're blue in the face and, and not many people are going to do it, which is great. It is because the couple true. people that do it eliminates like it eliminates a lot of their hassle, which is awesome. Absolutely. But- the bar is low. <laughs> uh, you've got to get out there, and you need to one ask good questions. There is there is no better community than the Amazon community that I can think of. That mm-hmm. I mean, just shares everything. If you ask a question and you ask a good, thoughtful question, you're very likely going to get an answer. And, and I mean, heck, if you're on Twitter, tag me. I'll I'll answer it as long as I see it. Like I don't I don't mind at all. Um, two, try to offer some sort of value. Okay, to be able, we need to attract people uh, that we want to have in our network, and so we need to be attractive to them. So we need to offer some sort of value. Um, I'll be quite honest. I I use this method, and over the past six years, it's literally been worth $5 million because I offered a little bit of value on the front end without necessarily expecting anything in return. Uh, And that relationship has blossomed into a a fantastic business partner. Um, And then you, you just need to be vulnerable, you know, make a bad video, share your story, share why you're getting into Amazon, share uh, a problem that you had because other people are going to resonate with it. Share a win that you had. People will resonate with that as well. And eventually you're going to attract the people who you need to be around. Um, and, and always try to look for people who you can offer value to who are in a position you want to be. Now, that doesn't mean if you're a day one seller, you go out and you are like, you know what? I need to be uh, in Miles and Garrett's text text messages. No, you need to be in someone who's been at this for six months. And then if you surpass them, then it's time to build another network and so on and so forth. It kind of, your network needs to grow with you and they always need to be a little bit ahead of you. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Like you just got to be out there and stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can think to yourself, oh, it's hard for me to put myself out there. You're simply putting a label on it. You're making it hard to justify your level of inaction or you can do it. Right. Cause you see, like, you know, the people that are doing it, do you think it was scary for them too? Uh, maybe, but who cares? It doesn't matter regardless because they did it. And now they're, you know, rewarded with, uh, you know, significantly less work needed for the same money or more money. Oh, yeah. I've been doing this for almost a decade on the content side and I still get butterflies, you know, hit and post. You know, is, am, am I going to, mistype something? Is the idea not going to be conveyed properly? Am I going to look stupid? Uh, in the end, nobody really remembers. Yeah, they remember no one that, cares, period. Yeah. yeah. They, they remember that you tried really, really hard. Uh, they remember that you were consistent about it. They remember that you were helpful. Uh, and then that will come around and pay itself back eventually. And then uh, like a bunch of broke people are like, oh, but what if I share too much? Or like, uh, are people really helpful? Like, uh, yeah, it, you know, just it doesn't make sense. Right? It's like no. if you're worried about like saturation, you're you're you know 
the same people are like applying for a job at like Deloitte and shit like that with like a hundred thousand other, you know, fresh college grads and shit like that. If the market on Amazon was shrinking and the number of sellers was going up, might we have an issue? Maybe. But the thing is right now is e-commerce is continuing to grow. Uh, the grocery category by itself is uh, slated to grow 12% per year and get to 200 billion by 2025. And that's just one single category in, you know, the, I don't know, 20 some categories that you can sell. So I don't know. The garbage about saturation is, is just not there. Too many people turn over because, you know, they can't yeah, make it work or don't want to yeah. make it work. Uh, and the new people coming in are, are not replacing them fast enough. Well, the barrier of entry is admittedly extraordinarily low, but Absolutely. the barrier of success is, is pretty high. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I would agree. And so there's thousands of new sellers joining the platform every day. But like you said, there's thousands dropping off. There's thousands of people that are, you know, tried it for a couple of days. Ah, it's not for me. Tried it for oh, not, days, for not for me. I hate me. that too. Just words that condemn yourself to a life of mediocrity. Yeah, the, it was the business model's fault. It wasn't you. No, 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 no. It, the business model <laughs> happened to you. Like it, it, it decided that it didn't work for you right there. Go, go clock in 40 years, like suit and tie right there. And someone else can decide your fate right there. Yeah, I I'm terminally unemployable. I, I cannot ever go back to a job. Uh, I'm not. I'm not built for it. I wasn't built for it when I had one, uh, and uh, and I'm definitely not built for it now. Uh, but you know, I've tried to. I've tried to teach probably a dozen family members and close friends how to do this business, and not one of them has lasted more than a week. Uh, now I've got I don't know 3,500 people who've come through you know, a course or another. Uh, and a lot of the, a lot more of those people have made it, but again, there's still a very high number that just, they don't last. Unfortunately, I, I don't wish that upon them. I want them to be successful, but it's just the name of the game, unfortunately. Yeah. Cool. All right. Sweet, man. And then where can people follow up with you for, uh, you know, more of the stuff you offer? Oh yeah. Uh, best place right now is Twitter. I'm, I'm at clear the shelf. Uh, I am, that has been one of my favorite platforms. Uh, it's been where some really high quality relationships have been built. Uh, and I think that the IQ on Twitter is uh, one of the highest among Amazon Twitter compared to some other uh, platforms of social media. Um, so yeah, Twitter at clear the shelf and uh, yeah, YouTube, I'm at clear the shelf everywhere. Cool. Sweet, man. Well, uh, well, thanks for coming on. Any uh, kind of final uh, like words of wisdom, anything we didn't touch on uh, in terms of like beginners and starting this the right way? I think the biggest thing is extend your time horizon. You know, yeah. a lot of people come in and they're like, listen, in, in two months, three months, I'm going to have quit, quit my job money. And that's not the case for most people. You know, there are people who are going to scale very, very fast. You're going to see them. They might be taking a little bit more risk than you're willing to take. They might be, uh, they might not have anything to lose and they're burning the boats and that's fine for them. It's not for everybody. So think about this in, you know, a one or a three year timeline. You can, you really underestimate what you can get done in a year. And if you are willing to keep at this for, you know, X amount of time, your chances of doing pretty well with this, if you're willing to learn, you're willing to put in the work, you're willing to network, uh, are really pretty high uh, if you just don't quit. Yeah. It's just a matter of holding your breath, right? I mean, Miles and I talk about this a, bu a bunch. There's no one that was around when we started that isn't making hundreds. I mean, that isn't making tons of money. It just mm -hmm. doesn't. It's not if they did it the right way. Yeah. yeah you know, what yeah, I mean? but like course. then again, if you stuck around, you probably stumbled even if you try not to you're gonna i mean it. if you hit enough singles you'll you'll get lucky with a home run at, at some point that's just absolutely sweet cool man well thanks everyone for listening and uh chris thanks for coming on as uh as always right there good to share some game and uh we'll see you guys in the next one